Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We pray that Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed you within this month of Ramadan to feel your faith elevated, strengthened, that your prayers are being answered, that you're feeling fulfillment in a way that perhaps you have not felt outside of Ramadan, and that He continue to bless us in the remainder of this month with all that is good in this life and in the next. Um, Allah Azzawajal accept from us our fasting and our worship as a whole. Allahumma ameen. Um, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We are seeing tremendous, tremendous amounts of our community members coming to the masjid during these blessed nights and days of Ramadan. And this is a beautiful thing. It's a fantastic thing. Today we want to just focus on some of the aspects that are very important for us to pay attention to. From what the Prophet والسلام, had uh, given attention to, especially as we're talking now about social gatherings, where there are large quantities of people, and to make sure that our hygiene, that our hygiene is going to be in a manner that is pleasing and at a level that is acceptable, so that while we're coming together to worship, we're not um, grossing each other out because of the lack of hygiene or the poor quality of hygiene. The first thing we'll talk about is oral hygiene. Now the Prophet والسلام, in his time they were basically limited to the siwak. And this is why we find that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he mentioned as is from the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala or even uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha where he said as-siwaku matharatun lilfam وَمَرْضَاتٌ لِلْرَبْ That the, uh, the siwak is the tooth stick, that brush that you may see that looks like a root. That it's a purification for the mouth and it's pleasing to our nurturer, our caretaker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that was something in the hadith is in a targhib wa tarheeb and it is declared sahih by Shaykh al-Albani rahmatullahi alayhim. He would take that tooth stick soften it up and then he would cleanse his teeth, his gums, his palate, his tongue. He would do this quite regularly. And he even said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith that's in Bukhari and Muslim, Lawla and Ashuk ala Ummati La Amartuhum Bisiwaki in the Kulli Salah. He says, if it were not for my fear of burdening my Ummah, my people, I would command them to use the siwak for oral hygiene with each prayer to help us to understand how important oral hygiene is. Um, oral hygiene, brothers and sisters, for us today, it has taken on many, many other wonderful levels. Of them is that we floss so that we get out whatever may be stuck between our teeth, that alhamdulillah, we go ahead and use toothbrush with toothpaste, we have mouthwash, but in addition to that, we should, we should also still use this siwak to make sure that we're able to really get what there may be of plaque and other things. But we want to make sure that we're paying attention to all of these. The teeth, the flossing, the gums, and especially the tongue. And this is something where sometimes folks may not pay attention to the tongue as part of their oral hygiene. If you brush your teeth, but you don't brush your tongue and scrape your tongue, all of those particles of whatever it was of food and, and, and other things of which you've consumed, they continue to fester on the tongue. Now, honestly, um, it's, 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 this should be like common sense and common knowledge for everybody. But honestly, it's not the case. And some folks, the strongness, the, 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 SubhanAllah, the odors that come from the mouth are just so strong, so powerful, so overwhelming. It's almost as though they have rotten teeth in their mouth or that they've got some horrible infection. And yet, um, with that, it's, it's like the norm for them. Some folks, their breath is so horrible, it's almost as though they've had fish pickled in milk. And, and they're talking and it's like, oh my God, you know, how, how do... And I'm talking about brothers, I haven't, I don't know anything about the sisters, but how is it that these sisters, sisters, talk to your husbands, help them with their oral hygiene. And brothers, if this is the case with the sisters, talk to them, help them with the oral hygiene. Um, if there's dentists among you that are there, please 
give advice. Uh, offer yourselves to come give talks to us in the masjid so that this way perhaps you can better help with what there is of hyalitosis, these, these horrible orders that come from the mouth. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, with regards to his family, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, and she was asked about um, How did the Prophet ﷺ begin his entrance into the home and with his family sallallahu alayhi wasallam and aisha radiallahu anha said bisiwak and this hadith is in muslim that he be, before he came and, 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 and interacted with the family he would brush his mouth out and he would pay attention to his oral hygiene now there's many things to that and part of it is even the aspect of intimacy and yes the prophet ali sallallahu alayhi used to kiss his wives and he would also show affection towards his kids but if you have dragon breath for crying out loud, who's going to want you to even get near them? You, you know, I feel sometimes as though my eyebrows begin to melt as people are talking to me, right? Hygiene, oral hygiene. So that's the mouth. What's the second? The second deals with our bodies. The Prophet ﷺ taught us with regards to Juma, which is basically the mandatory month, the weekly mandatory gathering for the men. But this is true now for the men and women as a whole. Not just that if you're going to come together on the weekly gathering, but if it's going to be even for the daily gathering. He taught us alayhi salatu wasalam in the hadith is in Abu Dawood and Shaykh al-Albani has declared it to be uh, sahih. He taught us that for whoever comes to the masjid, that they should take a bath. So that they are washed. And mind you, back in those days, brothers and sisters, all they really had was water. So even just using water to wash away the sweat, to wash away the perspiration, to wash away the body odor. But for us today, mashallah, tabarakallah, we have soap. Fragrance soap. I'm not talking about non-fragrance, fragrance soap. Mashallah, we have body wash that we can exfoliate and scrub ourselves down with so that this way, mashallah, there's nothing but the best that's left. We have shampoo. And again, all of these are fragrance with some of the most pleasant of, 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 of aromas there's conditioner and then on top of that there's body sprays there's deodorant all of these are things that we should be paying attention to if you're not going to take a shower daily at least every other day but when we're talking about the body sweating and you're working hard out there and who knows what of stuff we want to pay attention brothers and sisters alike Take that shower. Make sure that when you take the shower that you're using nicely fragrant soaps and body washes and shampoos and conditioners. And then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, dress with your best of clothing. The cleanest of what you have. Right? And this is where we want to do our best to make sure that when we're coming in the house of Allah Azawajal, we are presenting ourselves to Him clean and fresh and looking good and smelling good but that we're also, alhamdulillah, being a mirror to each other. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَسَّ طِيبًا إِنْ كَانَ عِنْدَ That you're going to put on whatever you have of طيب, of, of oils, of fragrances, of colognes. Now, brothers and sisters, both of us are supposed to smell good. And yes, I know that with regards to, with, you know, the different fragrances, there's all sorts of different things that are out there. Please, as Sheikh Saad Allah bless him would say, don't use the dollar store colognes and fragrances. We don't want these types of horrible things that are coming to us from China or who knows where that they're giving us headaches, they're making us feel sick. Get the good quality stuff. And if you're going to wear it, alhamdulillah, knowing that you've taken a shower and you're clean and you're fresh, Put on a quantity that's going to be meaningful for you to smell good and maybe the person next to you, but not so overwhelming that it's going to cause people to, you know, pass out because of the strongness of them. The concern I know for our sisters is that there is a hadith that mentions with regards to the women that if they leave the house and they're smelling like, you know, perfume, that they're considered to be like an adulteress. Now, I want to call to our attention something. That was an intentional act that was done by the women who actually used to prostitute themselves. So that's something that's clear and that was a differentiator to help us understand. With regards to our sisters today, understand that if you are taking that shower and you're putting on the underarm deodorant, 
Um, and it doesn't have to be the antiperspirant for, because I know some of us, we worry about the healthness of the antiperspirant aspect. You don't, it doesn't have to be an antiperspirant, even if it's just a deodorant. And even with regards to what you're going to have of soap and of shampoo, that's going to be fragranced. Nobody's going to smell that. You don't have to worry and fear that, oh my God, you know, you've left the house and now you're, you're you know, worried about that statement applying to you. N not at all. Not only that, but whatever you're going to wear of your internal clothing and you're going to spray some perfume on yourself, that's fine because then you're going to put on whatever you're going to wear of your clothing such that no one is really going to smell you unless they're next to you. And it's not going to be that any one of a man is going to be that close to you that they're going to smell you such that you should have anything to worry about. Men and women, brothers and sisters, young and old, let us all pay attention to this aspect of hygiene so that as we're coming to the house of Allah, we're coming to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, clean, presentable, smelling good, looking good, and that with regards to each other, that we're also being, alhamdulillah, a good mirror, reflecting the best of what Islam gives us of hygiene, and we'll better be able to worship Allah with peace of mind. I pray that Allah Rabbul Alameen, that He bless us all to be from those who when we learn that which is good and beneficial, that we apply it and that we take it to heart and that we work together cooperating with each other on all that is of goodness and righteousness. Allah Azza bless us all.